we're going to start with um, looking at um, hands. Excuse me one second. Um, and hands in the clean room. So the first thing is good hand disinfection is inbuilt into the GMPs. So we have EU GMP Annex 1 that says gloves should be regularly disinfected during operations. We also have the Code of Federal Regulations, FDA, that says people need to practice good sanitization and health habits, including the wearing of sterile gloves and the importance that these are regularly sanitized in order to minimize the risk of contamination. So some really important points there. So hand sanitization involves the application of 70% isopropyl alcohol or IPA. And this gives a broad spectrum microbial kill. And what IPA does, it penetrates the microbial cell wall and causes protein denaturation. So basically stopping those mechanisms of, of the microorganism cellular functions and uh, then preventing replication. It's not just a case of applying the IPA to gloved hands, the rubbing action, the vigorous rubbing, the covering of all the surfaces, as we see in a few seconds, is really important, as is covering all surfaces of the glove. And also the frequency of application is really important. So we must sanitize our hands prior to every application, every task we're about to perform. And also, if we just happen not to be doing anything, then it's good practice to practice glove sanitization every 15 minutes. And the whole practice is a one minute application technique. So let's go and have a look at a short video about how to sanitize our gloves properly. So, over to Tim. Okay, so let's deal with the subject of hand sanitization. I just happen to have some uh, surgical gloves here. So I should just uh, don those. Um, okay, one. Okay, so gloves on, uh, need some hand sanitizer. Um, no, that's not the right alcohol content. Use the right one. Okay, so hand sanitizer, gloves, hand. What I've got to do is put on the right quantity. Uh, also need to make sure that we're gonna run for the minute. So I'm having to have my handy uh, timer here. So let's uh, get that. Going, excellent. Okay, so let's apply the requisite um, 0.2 mil of the hand sanitizer. Okay, so it's really important that I begin by rubbing it into the palms of the hands. And now I want to make sure that the other side of the glove is receiving a liberal application of the hand sanitizer. Now I need to make sure that I'm applying the hand sanitizer over the lengths of each finger and thumb and on the other hand as well. So really making sure it's reaching all of the surfaces. And then it's really important to make sure, a bit more rubbing, that I'm gonna do the fingertips as well. So really get into that kind of motion there so you can see and then it's the old thumb twist okay so that's where you really make sure that you've got it everywhere and then a kind of a final rub over like that and we have sanitized hands with one minute application alrighty so we're now going to have a look at cleaning and disinfection 
So cleaning and disinfection is of fundamental importance as part of contamination control within the clean room. So it's really important when we're applying a disinfectant or a detergent using a wipe, which might be a wipe that we're spraying or it's a pre-saturated wipe, that we're working always from the cleanest area to the dirtiest area, not the other way around because we're just going to entrail contamination. We want to clean and disinfect in the same direction each time. So we're not going to go, mm, mm, mm. we're going to go woof, woof, woof in the same direction. We also have to make sure that we're doing slightly overlapping strokes, about 10 to 20 percent. And that's to avoid missing anything in the middle. It's important when we get to the end, where we've done that, that wipe, that stroke that we want to do, that we just have a little uplift like that in order to make sure that we're pulling any contamination away, any of the particles or microorganisms that are going to be adhered to that surface. We need to keep track of which surfaces we've cleaned and disinfected. And it's really important that we dispose of wipes carefully and drop them into infectious waste um, containers. Now there's a number of things that are um, slightly wrong when it comes to cleaning and disinfection that we kind of want to avoid. So we want to practice the folding wipe technique and we'll have a look at a video in a couple of minutes on that. But failing to fold the wiper to do the full fold wipe technique is not only wasteful of a clean room consumable, it also risks spreading contamination around the surface. It's also important to know that when you've done that single stroke with the wipe, that that surface of the wipe is considered to be contaminated. So if we were to continue to use that same surface of the wipe, all we're doing is reapplying contamination to another surface and potentially increasing the microbial presence on that surface. We must never apply a clean room wipe in a circular motion. OK, so it doesn't matter if I use an entire packet of wipes. The fact that I'm doing the circular motion is a way of spreading contamination and perhaps I might even not bothered cleaning that surface at all. It's also important that wipes are damp, but not dry. We don't ever want to use dry wipes, completely pointless. We don't want the wipes to be um, completely saturated either because um, that will also impede the ability to get the right amount of surface tension. OK, and then we have this important folding technique. So just to summarise before we watch the video, you want to take out a wipe, fold it in half, fold it in half again. Wipe using one side of the wipe. Undo the last fold. Fold the wipe so that the inverse side is revealed. Again, wipe on one surface of the wipe, open and repeat. So I'm pleased that uh, Tim's back with a, another video to have a look at that fourfold wipe technique. Over to you, bro. So with um, cleaning and disinfection, the application of the wipe is really important and you would have seen in previous videos um, how we've looked at the fourfold wipe technique. So all it simply means is you have a wipe, you fold it once and you fold it again. Saturated wipe and then you'll find a surface, so random surface here, and the application of the wipe on that surface is for a stroke and that means that is it for that side of the wipe. So you merely take the wipe, fold it over and expose another surface. And you do the same thing again. And you can do that four times, hence the fourfold wipe technique. And once that's been done with that particular wipe, that's gone, go and get another one. Keep it simple. Okay, so now we're gonna have a look at people in clean rooms and some of the key parts of movement within the clean room. So people in clean rooms are the biggest source of 
contamination. And this is because of the generation of particles, some of which will be microbial, and those microorganisms are probably going to be attached to rafts of skin matter. And then these present a severe contamination risk to the clean room. So, although we might dress to impress in the clean room by wearing the right clean room clothing, the movements and behaviours that we undertake within the clean room are of fundamental importance. So, an intensive movement of activity can lead to stronger particle emission. So the faster we move and the more movements we undertake, then the greater the risk of particle deposition within the clean room. So that's why people need to behave and move slowly and also consider whether their movements are in fact necessary within the clean room environment. And at all times, hectic and fast movement should be avoided, especially within aseptic filling areas. And we have a particular case that I uh, need to highlight about unintended and unwanted movements within the clean room environment. So, for the last time, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce Tim Sandal with a, another clean room snippet. Over to you, Tim. So with um, clean room movements, the observation that was made um, was about inappropriate movements within the clean room. So uh, this is within grade B and an operator's waiting for something to, to happen. And instead of just um, waiting in the classic clean room stance, like that or like that, while they're waiting, unfortunately the operator was pacing up and down, giving it a bit of the old swagger, um, which is inappropriate for the clean room due to the generation of particles. So movements need to be, when they're necessary, slow and deliberate. But most of the time, it's standing still. Like this, like this, like this, hands and arms away from touching the clean room suit. And that's what clean room movements and behaviours is all about, minimising that contamination impact. OK, well, that brings this video to its uh, end. And uh, thank you very much for listening. So we've covered three really important aspects of working in the clean room. Clean room glove disinfection. Do it often, do it well. Clean room cleaning. It's the fourfold wipe technique and the unidirectional parallel overlapping streaks. And then clean room movements, keep them to a minimum. Thank you very much. I've been Tim Sandal. It's been a great pleasure to be with you throughout this video. Goodbye bye.